itself properly for them. And because Dr. Prager understands uh, you know, the, do the right dosage, um, given how many inf infusions I'm going to have, whether I'm going to have one or three in a row, um, he's managed to you know, gauge it very well and successfully. So that their effectiveness has gotten better. It hasn't worn off. You know, there is, you know, some after effects in the sense that I can feel the ketamine in my system, but um, uh, the side effects have all been beneficial. I um, am able to get my sleep cycle um, uh, turned around again. Um, RSD patients, including myself, um, tend to have bouts of insomnia. Uh, we tend to feel our pain more at night than other times during the day. I sleep better after my ketamine infusions. I have more energy. Um, uh, m the amount of pain medicine I need is in at the absolute minimal I've ever had to take over the course of the last 10 years. Um, I have more energy and um, you know as long as I manage uh, my activity when I get home and I try not to do too much uh, to make up for lost productivity I, I have nothing but uh, positive benefits. So. Can you tell us a little bit about what the experience of undergoing the ketamine itself is like? Oh, um, when I first um, underwent a series of infusions, um, I had visions, and um, the visions were, there was a, a, a current, an underlying current that seemed to run through each vision. Um, the first set, um, involved um, me witnessing the actual building and development of the LA Basin and by the, the time, um, by the day of my last treatment, um, I was actually uh, having visions of the UCLA building being built, Dr. Prager coming to work and um, me coming to LA. Um, since then, my visions haven't been, um, they've been more abstract and hard to articulate, but the experiences usually revolve around me working, um, working at um, repairing my body, uh, working, I, I'm always trying to fix my RSD and my mind and um, fix my body and um, you know resolve try to resolve um, pain uh, in the places that I'm feeling it um, so I've never had anything negative and they always center basically around me preparing for and um, trying to heal myself. I, I'd like to make a distinction between the work that we do here and the work that Dr. Schwartzman published in the journal Pain in December 2009. Dr. Schwartzman is clearly a leader in development of many of the complex regional pain syndrome therapies and in particular has been at the forefront of ketamine therapy since its inception in the treatment of CRPS. Dr. Schwartzman performs double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized studies under a very strict protocol that does not allow for much flexibility in the doses that are being administered. This is the only way that good research can be produced, and I commend Dr. Schwartzman for the work he's doing. We, on the other hand, are not doing research here on this treatment. We are attempting to provide the best possible therapy and not produce evidence-based data. Thus, we have greater flexibility to provide adjustments and doses based on what the patient needs and how they tolerate what we are administering. Thus, when a patient comes in the first time they receive doses 
comparable to what Dr. Schwartzman um, administers in his protocol, but if the patient tolerates this well, we have the freedom to escalate the dosage using the same protocol in terms of the amount of time. All our patients receive clonidine and an anti-nausea medication uh, as adjuvant prior to receiving midazolam before the ketamine. Um, we, we've had large dosage ranges for our patients, and I think part of the reason that we have the good results that we have is that we have the freedom to escalate the dosages to much higher than those that would be permitted in a research protocol. We have a, an interesting way of determining uh, when to induce uh, the ketamine or when to administer the first ketamine. We get the patient to a point of amnesia that they no longer can remember things, whether they are awake or not awake, and we feel that's the appropriate time to administer ketamine. This keeps the patient in a relatively light state um, not being truly awake once the ketamine is being administered, but not being very deep, so that as soon as the ketamine infusion is turned off, the patient tends to wake up within um, minutes. The um, patient is usually arousable during the infusion, yet we choose not to disturb the patients. Most patients choose to bring music with them that they find to be um, quite soothing. Um, I, I want to mention a few words about the adjuvant medications. Um, because of uh, ketamine's uh, effect on the way pe patients see initially with um, large amounts of uh, nystagmus, patients can become nauseated. Uh, we therefore administer uh, intravenous anti-nausea medicines prophylactically before um, administering the ketamine and then again at the conclusion of the infusion. In addition, as a result of the work that Dr. Olney um, has performed, um, all of our patients receive clonidine as a prophylactic medication. Dr. Only feels that uh, clonidine has a neuroprotective effect in the use of uh, ketamine. None of our patients have had any um, side effects from the ketamine aside from some occasional nausea and some grogginess of the day of the procedure. So we have some monitors on. Um, we have uh, electrocardiogram, which we can see over there. Pulse oximeter, which measures the oxygen in your blood. And then um, we have an automated blood pressure cuff on, on your calf to measure your blood pressure. So we're measuring um, your heart rate and your blood pressure and the oxygen in your blood as we do this. Yes. Now, so um, did you sign any special paperwork related to the ketamine this morning before we did this? Yes, I signed an informed consent okay. document and I do it before every ketamine infusion. Okay, now we're gonna give you um, three different medicines before we actually give you the ketamine. Um, and the first medicine is a pill of clonidine and so we'll give you that. Ready? Yes. And now the sec mm -hmm. second medicine is a medicine that prevents nausea. And Give that in an intravenous form. It goes in your IV, so you're good. We've already established an intravenous line. And then the final medicine before the ketamine is the Versed, and we have a little protocol here where we actually um, start the ketamine after you lose your memory. Yes. And you have a particularly, what's your IQ? Do you really want me to say it on? Well, you have a high IQ, we'll just <laughs> leave it like that. And so your, your memory is about the most extraordinary memory that, that I've seen. It takes a lot of first set to make your memory go away, but we make your memory go away before we start the ketamine and you can still be somewhat awake at that time, but that's all we need to make things smooth and then we don't give you too much um, first set so that you have trouble waking up. Uh, we just get you to the point where you don't remember and we find
that's smooth. So now you actually have a fairly high um, slope there to descend. Elizabeth, tell us how you feel. Do you have any pain? Uh, I don't know. What's that? At the moment. At, at the moment what? At the moment. At the moment. 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 Yeah? At the moment. At the moment? I have no pain. Uh -huh. Sorry. But you're just waking up now. Yeah, I go.